Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's Wednesday Wisdom in partnership with the Institute and our Luzerne County Chambers. We will present the findings of the 2020 Evolve program, including identified resources and strategies that can assist businesses and industries in Luzerne County that have been impacted by COVID-19. Our Wednesday Wisdom series are informational webinars with business and subject matter experts featuring an opportunity for Q&A to support business connectivity and sustainability. All attendees will be in listen-only mode. This event is also being live streamed on Facebook and recording will be uploaded on our YouTube page uh, by the end of this week. So be respectful of everyone's time. We have a lot of time at the end for a Q&A session, uh, session. If you would like to ask the questions, please do so in the chat bar on Zoom or enter your questions in the comment section on Facebook and we'll be able to ask those who are presenters today. Through Project Evolve, we have worked with our Luzerne County Chambers and economic development partners over the course of the past three months to better understand the challenges and opportunities that were generated by COVID-19 so that we can identify and deliver innovative solutions to help our business evolve and thrive in the new post-COVID economy. Today, Shani and Tim are here with us to share their findings. Tim, take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Timothy Elms, and I am the data analyst and public policy specialist at the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber. And my name is Shawnee Mohammed. I am the Economic Development Specialist at wilkes Bear Connect and the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and in the past few months, Tim and I have been the co-project managers for Project Evolve. I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone for joining us today as we present our findings of this project. Project Evolve is a project funded by the CARES Act, allowing the Luzerne County Chambers of Commerce to assist businesses during and after covid during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has been devastating to the local economy in Luzerne County. Unemployment has been at a record high with significant signs of improvement over the course of the year. Businesses are struggling, with some even closing their doors permanently. However, it is imperative to understand what businesses are experiencing in order to respond most effectively. Early information shows that some businesses were disrupted more than others, and that despite the challenges of the pandemic, some industry groups are seeing growth and in innovation. Therefore, their issues are much different than those that remained closed for months or are operating with restrictions. The purpose of the project is to better comprehend what businesses and industries are facing and identify resources that could best assist them. It is important to understand that there is an evolution in what the businesses are facing. In March 2020, the governor implemented a shutdown strategy to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Many of those restrictions were lifted through a phased reopening in late spring and early summer. However, even in the green phase of the phased reopening, some restrictions remained in place for certain industry groups and have changed based on either the science or lessons learned as to what works and what doesn't. And what doesn't. With that in mind, I will kick it to Shani to briefly go over the process used for this initiative. Awesome, thank you, Tim. Uh, so Project Evolve began with a short electronic business survey. Uh, the survey was deployed to all businesses in each of our chamber's memberships uh, so that we could learn more about the challenges and the opportunities that they're facing during the pandemic. Uh, members were invited to virtual roundtable discussions to share their stories and their experiences, um, and this really helped to add perspective to the information that uh, we first got in those surveys. Um, so it not, and not only did it, did, that, did it do that, but it also expanded the opportunity for businesses to participate, gave them another way to, to put their input in. Um, so a report detailing the findings of the survey and the discussion of the roundtables was then prepared and distributed to the Connect partners. And in a separate roundtable, the partners identified resources that could assist the businesses. So from there, a report was prepared and distributed that identifies potential solutions and resources for the business community, along with this report that summarizes the entire process, findings, and secondary data. Now, uh, our partners have been instrumental in helping us execute this, this process. Uh, our regional chambers, the Back Mountain Chamber, the Greater Hazleton Chamber, and the Greater Pittston Chamber have been working with us to push these surveys and roundtable opportunities out to as many local businesses as possible. And our Connect partners consisted of the 
Allen P. Kirby Center for Free Enterprise and Entrepreneurship, Ben Franklin Technology Partners, Diamond City Partnership, Family Business Alliance, Penn State wilkes bear the Institute of Public Policy and Economic Development, and Wilkes University's Small Business Development Center. These Connect partners really brought their expertise to the table and then they offered a lot of really helpful solutions to our program overall. So before we move forward, we just wanna take a moment to thank all of those partners because their collaboration and their partnership uh, was so invaluable and so very much appreciated. Um, and with that, we actually have one of our partners here with us today. Uh, we have Terry Ohms from the Institute here with us to give an in-depth presentation on how we've pivoted with our execution of this initiative and the findings of the program overall. So uh, please welcome Terry. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the presentation and we'll get started with some background information. Um, so as, as was mentioned earlier by Shawnee and Tim, there's been an evolutionary process for businesses. And it started with the initial shutdown at the end of March, which caused major disruption at the end of March and April. Um, actually through uh, June for most businesses, although some businesses received a reprieve earlier on. Through the summer, everything opened up and was operational. Um, and then now as we're late into fall, early winter, we're entering that shutdown period again. So let's talk about initial disruption. Um, what we did was take the industry and employment impacts and put together a qualitative classification on a four point scale on five indicators. Percent of employment directly affected by the statewide shutdown orders, declines in job postings, a survey of regional economic experts, potential for effective telework, and projected short-term unemployment from an external economics firm. The industry groups assigned as having the highest disruption initially were construction, retail trade, arts, entertainment, and recreation, and accommodation and food services. These industries combined account for 26% of regional private employment. Another 25% of workers were employed in industries with that medium to high disruption. Though there was significant variation within each broad category um, is certain, many workers in those industries have seen job losses, furloughs, or reduced hours even at present. This has created a significant ripple effect through the economy, subsequently affecting other industry sectors. The impact of a decline in spending from tourism alone is going to have wide reaching impacts on the region's economy. Um, as we reported in our indicators report this year, as of 2018, visitor spending in the region by business and pleasure travelers was over $1.6 billion and had been growing year over year. Next slide, please. As we look at industries and occupations, the largest sector in Luzerne County is healthcare and social assistance. And this is a fairly broad category in that it contains um, all organizations, private and nonprofit um, that work in healthcare and ancillary services, as well as social assistance providers. 25,876 workers were, are employed in this particular sector. The next largest sector in the county is transportation and warehousing at 17,111 workers and retail trade at 17,000. Now between these three sectors alone, there was wide variation in uh, employment, unemployment and business operations. Um, for example, um, healthcare is obviously an essential workforce. Some elements of social assistance was essential um, healthcare also included some non-essential workers, and many of those experienced job loss during the initial period of COVID in the spring of 19. The next largest sector, transportation and warehousing, was actually all deemed essential. And therefore, those working in our region's uh, warehouses, uh, transportation infrastructure, uh, not pleasure transportation, um, and even e-commerce uh, were able to maintain employment through uh, the early phases of COVID um, and through the remainder of this year. Retail suffered tremendously because of the closures in the spring um, 
even though business picked up in the summer, there was still some fear. And so not all retail workers were brought back to the workforce initially. We're starting to see a change in that trend despite an upward trajectory of cases. Um, next slide, please. So COVID-19 and association, associated mitigation factors have forced businesses to close or reduce services or even alter operations to continue providing services. Though most businesses have since reopened um, prior to this most recent uh, shutdown order, um, employment impacts have remained. Employment and recovery has been evident over the course of the past few months although significant cha challenges remain for the labor market and for the broader economy. In Luzerne County, the unemployment rate grew from 6.6% in February to 18.5% in April, um, and has now seen some declines in following months. There were similar trends in Lackawanna County. There's also an unemployment drop of five percentage points from July to September alone, September alone in Luzerne County, indicating a rapid pace of economic recovery on the whole. On the whole. Statewide initial and continued unemployment insurance claims have trended downward. Continuing claims indicating long-term unemployment have fallen from over 1 million per week statewide in May to about 219,000 in the week ending October 31. Initial unemployment claims have also trended noticeably downward, though over the most recent weeks, the rate of decrease has slowed with an average of 20 to 25,000 statewide new claims per week. This is still well above the pandemic average of only about 16,000 initial claims per week. Let's go to the next slide, please. When we look at job postings, um, COVID-19 has really changed staffing needs and priorities for business. Uh, in the second quarter of 2020, coinciding with some of the most significant impacts of business closures, there were 21,000 job postings in both counties. Um, these were open positions. As of today, there are over 9,100 jobs open in Luzerne County that have been posted for the past 30 days with 450 different occupational titles requiring various skills and various education levels. The most recent data shows the largest share of job ads were in transportation and material moving occupations. So that is that warehouse, uh, those warehouse positions, um, followed by retail sales, registered nurses, and tractor trailer and heavy truck drivers. Rounding out the top 10 occupation needs, there's other warehouse and manufacturing staff, primarily entry level associates in both warehousing and manufacturing. Uh, frontline management of retail stores um, and first tier supervisors, uh, customer service representatives, fast food and counter workers, a variety of maintenance repair workers, and rounding out number 10 on the top 10 occupations most sought after right now are those in social services and human services, particularly at the assistant level. So now that we know the secondary data, let's talk a little bit about more of what the businesses themselves have indicated that they've experienced. So next slide, please. So through the surveys in the round table, we've asked businesses to identify opportunities and challenges. Within most of the broad industry categories, there were some subsectors that did well and others that were hurt more significantly by the pandemic, specifically hospitality, accommodations, personal care, and entertainment and rec recreation were the hardest hit financially by the pandemic. Based on roundtable discussions, it appeared that, these, that the businesses that were able to pivot their business models or to rely on technology or other elements of service delivery were more successful than those that did not. Um, several of the sectors experienced ongoing challenges that were present pre-COVID, specifically those related to workforce. Um, 
finance and insurance, some manufacturing, e-commerce and warehousing, construction, and even some retail and services saw growth um, through COVID or had been growing prior to the pandemic. Um, one interesting dichotomy is looking at those subsectors. So if you take apart construction, well, initially there was a shutdown in construction and a late start and some potential business lost. Contractors that focused on residential rehab or repair saw major increases in their workload as home improvement projects soared because more people were working from home or staying home and chose to reinvest in their homes. Complementary to that, uh, while many retail stores suffered, those that sold household furniture experienced uh, the same growth phenomenon, people reinvesting back into their homes. Some janitorial and maintenance businesses saw a decrease in their businesses as most offices were closed and people were working from home, yet those that primarily serviced industrial facilities could not meet the increased demand for services. The nonprofit community saw market increased demand for services but with the inability to conduct events and other fundraising saw significant drops in revenue that presented challenge. Other research in, in, institute research showed that while many organizations did apply for PPP funding, many did not think they were eligible and therefore missed out on the opportunity. This also affected very small businesses that did not meet eligibility requirements. Um, Employers also identified um, barriers that they felt were affecting uh, employment, which was one of the larger challenges that the employers referenced. It had to do with uh, hybrid or at-home schooling, lack of daycare, transportation, um, as barriers for getting people back into the workforce. Some of the other employers cited that the increased unemployment compensation was a challenge and despite protections that should have allowed, should have prohibited unemployed individuals from receiving that expanded compensation if work were available, um, many businesses said the system didn't work. So now that we have some broader ideas on opportunities and challenges, how can we help our business community mitigate them? Well, I think one of the things that popped out of our round table, round table discussions as part of the Connect Partners is that many of the resources exist in our community. Um, many of those services are free um, and it's just uh, an opportunity to hear, present those services and even offer ideas for new types of programs and initiatives. So let's go to the first slide. Um, one of the biggest resources for local businesses are the Chambers of Commerce themselves. Um, Frontline during the pandemic, they were making sure members and non-members alike were aware of special government programs. From members, they were offering support services and helping to access them and find other partners needed to help them apply for those services uh, and to find other resources. So. Um, in that situation, the Chambers really expanded the types of services that they could offer the businesses. So based on the discussions um, and the needed resources from businesses, one of the best things that can be offered to the Chambers is that member to member services. So many of the businesses talked about having to pivot and find new ways to deliver products and services to customers. And that led to developing online platforms to be able to market and reach the customers. Um, and so chamber, other chamber members can help provide those services. And so the chambers have been serving sort of as that matchmaker to uh, fill the needs of local businesses by using other chamber member businesses. Um, they did that somewhat before the pandemic, but I think the, the level of importance of those kinds of resources were really demonstrated during the pandemic. Um, right now we're in a position where many of the government programs to support businesses are expiring. We know that Congress is now evaluating a new package um, with multiple parts um, that could help local businesses, but right now um, those resources are, are expiring and the new ones have not yet started. But once they do, the chambers 
have been a resource to ensure that the businesses are aware of the programs, the eligibility requirements, uh, and other resources within the chamber memberships that could support them in making the appropriate application. And then finally, purchasing consortiums. Um, many of the businesses talked about the inability to find the appropriate PPE to protect their employees, to protect their, their customers, um, so that they could remain open. Um, and uh, the purchasing consortiums could easily be formed just around PPE, but also so many other products that businesses uh, need and using the economies of scale that can be leveraged through multiple businesses using the chambers as that platform could be another effective tool to help develop those shortages. Um, next slide, please. Other resources that exist in the community um, include the Small Business Development Center. And, and I put this one first, um, because I think the SBDC network is an extremely vital resource that's really not well known or understood. Um, while it's entitled small business, technically they can serve um, manufacturing firms with up to 500 employees, retail firms with up to 250 employees. So not necessarily what the rest of the world would call small, but that is their particular definition. And they can assist with all sorts of business services from crisis and recovery planning, cash flow management, um, dealing with uh, marketing uh, and uh, new strategy development, improving social media. Um, they have a staff of professional consultants that can work with you. They also work with other business partners through the chamber networks to help deliver some services. And so I think that's a, a broad resource that really covers a number of the items um, that were identified as needs. We also talk about the Connect Partners and the Allen P. Kirby Center for Free Enterprise and Entrepreneurship, the Ben Franklin Technology Partnerships, the Family Business Alliance, and even our organization provide a variety of services that allow businesses to learn and engage um, and even look at financing opportunities. And there are other organizations in the community that offer a variety of services as well, and they include NEPA Alliance, NEPERC, which deals primarily with manufacturers, and Penn's North, Northeast. I think what's important to remember is that um, through this whole situation, a business needs to utilize other resources as well. Um, resources that they may only go to for specific periods of time, like their accountant at tax time their bank when they need a loan, um, and even their attorney for some other aspects. But these should also be considered part of a business's resource or network team and a great opportunity to reach out to those entities and individuals to assist businesses um, through the, the COVID crisis. Um, I'm sure once the next round of stimulus or uh, incentive packages come out through the federal and state government, the chambers will be forefront again in helping their, their business members find these resources and uh, procure these resources. Um, and then finally, one other resource that I think is extremely important is that of the CareerLink network. Many of the businesses talked about issues uh, finding uh, and retaining employees through the, the COVID crisis. Um, and CareerLink has been an incredible resource in helping businesses do that, just that and helping to provide and locate training for businesses as well. So I think those are, um, uh, it's another important resource for business to consider. Um, technically, I think a lot of people also misrepresent or do not fully understand that the resources CareerLink offer, but especially since um, the uh, workforce is a primary challenge, um, CareerLink is an organization that can be at the table. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna encourage businesses to think out of the box. So we're dealing in a situation where kids are home from school, um, daycare is not widely available during the crisis. Um, transportation can be an issue. And this is where businesses or consortium of businesses can work together to solve their own problems. One case study we learned about through this entire process was that of I2M manufacturing in Mountaintop. Um, 
They had conference space that wasn't being utilized because there were no face-to-face -face meetings, and they knew many of their employees were dealing with issues of child care during the day and being able to support their kids in a learning environment while they were learning from home. Um, so not even two full months ago, they converted their conference space into a learning space and brought on a, a credentialed instructor, instructor who is helping with uh, children going through the hybrid, the online learning process, assisting with homework and then providing other academic enrichment or physical activity through the day. The program is available to their employees with children in third to eighth grade and short term results from that have proven very positive. In fact, um, they noted that there was a zero absentee rate among parents whose students were enrolled in that program on site. Um, so this is another opportunity for businesses to think out of the box and help meet the unusual demands that our employees are currently facing. They can be done on their own or in collaboration with other businesses and your local chambers can be a great conduit to help be the matchmaker for those types of partnerships. So that is our presentation on the findings. I know the report is gonna be available as well as the resource document. Um, to be able to be shared with uh, all of the businesses and organizations, um, not only participating today, um, but within the memberships of the various chambers, uh, and I'm sure it will also be shared with the media. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Um, thank you to you and the Institute team for your help bringing context and understanding to this report. We'll be sending this report, like Terry said, to everyone who particip participated in Project Evolve, as well as our chamber memberships. For our local business owners watching, thank you for participating, and we do hope that the findings in these reports will be valuable to you as you navigate your way through the upcoming months. We thank you for your time to be here, and we look forward to any questions you may have. Thank you, Shani, Terry, and Tim. I do have one question here that came through. Um, you guys already did answer that we have a copy that we can share. And also there's another one that I kind of have here. Uh, employers need employees and there are a number of unemployed people. What uh, could we do? Sorry about that. I unmuted uh, muted myself. Um, I, I think the last part of my discussion um, is, is really where we need to focus going forward. Um, there, are, there are barriers to employment right now, yet the jobs are available. So um, looking at opportunities to mitigate some of those challenges um, is probably the way to go. Um, employers do have enough on their plate and have a variety of challenges they're dealing with, including all of these additional operating restrictions and, and, and efforts to keep employees safe. And then of course, delivering their products and services. But um, without mitigation of the barriers dealing with childcare and things like transportation, it's really not gonna solve that workforce problem. Um, so it, it's sadly a time where we need to think out of the box uh, and look at solutions just like I2M did uh, in putting that on-site learning center within their facility. Thank you, Terry. I have uh, another question here, Tim, maybe this is for you and, and Shani. If someone wanted to get this full report, maybe they're not on the, on the session here today, not viewing online, how could they get that information? Johnny, you uh, want to answer that or? Yeah, yeah, I got this one. Um, so uh, as Terry mentioned, we are sending the report out to um, all of our program touch points. So anyone who has taken a survey, anyone that participated in our roundtable discussions um, and also to our chamber membership. Uh, and we do plan to send that out before the end of this year. So if for any reason you haven't received an email with that full report, um, feel free to, to reach out to myself or to Tim, um, and we will be sure to get it to you. Thank you, Shani. It looks like that's all we have question-wise. I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you, Shani, Tim, and Terry for presenting to us today, and thank you for everyone that's joining here watching live on Facebook and through Zoom. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to help you and connect you with these folks. Um, until then, have a happy and safe holiday. Enjoy the snow. We'll catch you next time for the next Wednesday Wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.